What's going on, everybody? Uh, it's Hollis Full of Love, CEO and founder of Crying Financial. I'm here with, you know, one of my homies way back from preschool, <laughs> the mental wealth advisor itself, Mr. Jer Jeremiah Reed. How you doing, Jeremiah? I'm doing pretty good, Hollis, man. Thanks for having me. Um, I really look forward to having this conversation and dialogue just to um, let people know about mental wealth and then also to just kind of reframe their perspective when they think about money. Most definitely, most definitely. So let's talk about it. I know uh, I've been seeing it all over my social media. Me and you have been talk, have been uh, in constant communication since I think like October. Um, what is it that you're setting out to do here with your book, your release, and Mental Wealth Advisor? Um, what, what's the whole plan and purpose behind everything you got going on right now? Man, it's been an amazing journey. So this concept started off pretty much me and my wife. We tackled, we paid off, you know, two hundred and ten thousand dollars worth of debt. Wow. And just so people know a little bit about my background, um, from an academic standpoint, I've always been solid, you know, straight A's the entire way through. Wow. Um, I didn't get my first, like, B until high school, and then I got my first D when I was in college. So it was like, you know, because I was, like, messing around. <laughs> but uh, I just say that to say, like, though you might have a strong academic foundation and experience great success, in school that does not equate to a great financial education. 100%. Um, so with that, um, of course, made a lot of dumb decisions financially and that led me to a huge hole. And I tried different plans to, you know, Dave Ramsey and some other um, plans to kind of get out the hole, but none of it worked. And so I built my own system and that system was based on my financial mindset. And that's how mental wealth was born. Man, so, Wow, two hundred and ten thousand dollars—that's a huge. And let's be clear, we are not. We're still relatively young. Have you hit thirty yet? No, no bro, twenty-nine. So you'll be thirty this coming November, right? Yep. Yeah. See, so that's amazing to be able to. You know, first of all, I see a lot of people they get themselves in them holes, whether it be from student loan debt, um, whether it be from just consumer debt, purchasing cars and getting bad deals, purchasing homes and not necessarily getting the best deal. Um, what was the mistakes that led up to you? realizing like, hey, I gotta get out of this hole. Yeah, bro, so I shared this in my book. Um, so the very first time I realized like, dang, like I'm really tripping is when I was in Gary, I was hooping on the east side and um, I shattered my elbow. Oh. And that transpired to me like going through one, like mentally I was like stressed, um, broken, cause I was like broke. And it was only one doctor in Indiana that could repair my arm. Wow. It was like 70 Gs. <clears throat> at this point, um, I didn't know how much my insurance would cover. Right. And I didn't have a whole bunch of money saved up. Um, I had nobody I can call on, like, hey, bro, let me borrow 15, 20 bands. Like, right. I need it real quick. I mean, who does um, where we come yeah, from? Exactly. So unless you're selling, like, dope or something, you're not yeah. going to have that, like, sitting around. And so in that moment, I realized, like, I got to change my life around. Like, I got to be serious. Like, right. I'm crippled for the rest of my life. How can I provide for my daughter at that time? Because my right. son wasn't born. But those things just had me thinking. And then I got into survival mode, bro. I was selling Jordans, whatever I had to do to pay for rehab. Um, right. Just, I, you know, can walk around and use my arm um, functionally. So that's when I really got serious. And that's when, like, my mindset, like, totally switched, like, I don't got to stunt for nobody. I don't got to pretend like I'm up here when I'm really down here when it right. comes to money. Um, because sometimes, especially where we're from, um, you grow up with nothing. So when you get a little bit of something, you instantly want to spend that whatever you get on cars, clothes, um, jewelry, whatever. The case stuff. Be. But that stuff holds no value. And when I was in the hospital bed, arm looking you know like a chicken wing it was like none of that mattered. like no. bro like for real i had to get to it and um i had to set the tone for my family because in that moment bro if something would have happened to me if i would have died on that concrete from getting bridged in the air or whatever i had nothing bro yeah. nothing at all. you and can't so, take it with you no can't take it with me and then that's when i really started getting serious about the finances created the plan changed the mindset so I got the process, it's five Ps. So the first P is um, purpose. So I really sat down and was like, hey, what is my purpose behind me getting financially free as far as debt? 
what my legacy is going to be with my family. And once I nailed that down, I was able to create a real plan. Um, I always manage other companies. I looked right. at their financials. I got them right. I did their budget, but I never did mine. So right. I started treating my household like a company. And I got real strategic. I've got quarterly, annually budgets. I'm constantly in review. Don't nothing get past me um, that I don't know about. I started getting real serious. And um, building in some fun too, bro, because it took me four years and 10 months to pay off that 200 uh, and 10K. So it was like, how do I strategically build in fun for my family to keep me motivated throughout this process? Right. And you don't want to burn them out either. Exactly. Um, so we didn't go on no vacations, nothing really crazy, but you know, we had some little minor trips, Kentucky Kingdom, something like that, but just the little things to keep us encouraged along the way. And right. then uh, a big thing, bro, is surrounding yourself around the right people. Sometimes you got to eliminate friends, family, um, the haters going to be there, but you just got to be conscious of who's in your circle um, and try to keep positive energy around you because you don't need no negativity um, when you're pursuing something like this. 100%. You got to stay focused on your grind and know what's for you uh, and make sure you see that through. But uh, I think what I keep hearing you say, um, and it, it's funny, the parallels in childhood to adulthood is family, right? So we've known each other pretty much our entire lives. I know your family. I know how tight you guys are. I know how big your family is. So to see you now having your own family, was that something that was a motivating factor and saying, like you said, I got to see my legacy through? And also, how did that? How did your family influence that in you at an early age? Definitely, brother. So you know, like we go back to Chuck Bucks playing bitty ball yeah, together. <laughs> sure. But uh, like your dad was like my dad. So like I didn't really have a true quote unquote father figure other than my grandfather. Right. And then when he passed away uh, with cancer, it was like I knew that I wanted to be like the best father possible. Right. Uh, going to make sure I was there for my kids, make sure they had everything. And with that comes me making better decisions to set up them for their future. And I know I was able to put some eye in like private school and stuff like that in the beginning. But even beyond that, how do I set my daughter up for success? That was a major motivation for me because I didn't want her growing up with the same financial struggles that I had. Right. Um, whether it's the living situation or whatever she was going to go through in life, I want to give her a head start. And sometimes as black people, we feel like guilty of like, you know, Sister, they struggle like I struggled, you know yeah. what I mean? They, they got to learn how I learned. No, nah, man, yeah. give your kid a head start. It's other people in this world giving their kid a head start. So why wouldn't you do that? Um, so that was a big motivation for me because family is huge. And I wanted to make sure that I took care of my wife and my children. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I think, uh, from like you said, from where we come from and in, our, in the Black community itself, we had that mindset, like you said, they got struggle like I struggle. Um, but for me, and for, I think for you as well, we saw our families make so much sacrifice that so we wouldn't have to struggle, right? And now it put us in a position where we don't got to worry about sacrifice. Well, we got to sacrifice, true, but our sacrifices are so that they can have an opportunity we didn't have so that they can have every opportunity, right? Um, exactly. Make the world extremely way more open, wide open and, and bigger for them um, as compared to us where I know like you, it was like, well, you getting good grades, go be a doctor or a lawyer. You know what I mean? It was like, those are the only two career paths. But, I mean, talk, touch, talk about how, like you said, you always got good grades. You always had a good education. Um, I know you was a valedictorian in your class, but you still didn't have that financial, uh, that financial education. And I can speak to that myself. I got an accounting and finance degree, but I don't have a personal finance education other than the one I self-educated myself with and continue to do so every day. Talk about the problem that you see in that in our community as a whole. So, yeah, man. So, I wrote the book to inspire people that they can do it to renew their mind. And then I launched my own business as well, a financial coaching company centered right. in financial education, just so it can be a gap or a bridge the gap that we have. Because like, this is something we should be taught, brother, but it's not taught. And nope. so what people do when they get older, they feel bad that they don't know it. Mm -hmm. And that shame and guilt mentally breaks them down and which leads to cycles of generations of poor money management. Right. So I want to tell people like, hey, it's okay that you don't know this right now. It's about renewing your mind and then getting the education and removing that shame and guilt so you can yep. move forward. You got to empower them. You got to empower, like educate. So one of, one of the biggest things we say with Parent Financial was educate, empower, inspire. And I think what you're doing, it really sings to that 
100%. Uh, through breaking down that uh, those barriers of education, and you give people so much more confidence to be able to go out and accomplish whatever goals that they do have. Um, and it's, it's ridiculous that uh, in 2020, there's still so many barriers of entry in terms of education to know what the right thing is to do in your personal finances. But what, like you said, you, you talked about how it was personal for you and you saw uh, the struggles that you had, which are you know, managing your personal budget and then going through and changing that mindset. What made you go about and say, okay, well, I want to help other people do this. You know, what was the, the, the thought behind that and saying, I want to write a book and then also start a business? Yeah, man. So I always had a big heart for helping others. And then my relationship with God centers a lot of the things that I do. And I felt like for me to go through everything that I did and overcome, it wasn't just for me. Right. Um, it was for other people too. And if I can use my issues, my pain, my mistakes, uh, my stupid money management, if you want to say that for lack of better words, for a greater good, why not sacrifice and be transparent? Right. With other and it all started too, um, before the company even got put together. Um, I was doing like a little Bible study and I was trying to figure my way out how to help people. And um, one of the ladies that was in there, her name was Brandy. Um, and I helped her out. She became debt free. She was like wow. the very first person. And this was pre mental wealth, you know, everything. So I'm like, dang, this is really powerful. Like if I can package this up together and present it well, mm -hmm. um, I can really do something with this. And so that kind of just led to confirmation and more inspiration for me to put it together and write the book. Cause like, I don't know about you, but I was super smart, but I hated English. So writing <laughs> was like, not my like forte. Um, I hated but, science, but, man. I hated science. <laughs> yeah, see, I was good in science, man. But <laughs> English, I was like, man, I don't know. And, you know, sometimes when you feel like you inadequate or you're not 100% at something, when you're used to excelling always at 100%, you keep pushing it back. Right. And I'm like, man, I'm going to just put it together and then I'm going to surround myself with people to get it done. And that's what led me to be with a publishing company to write my first book. Wow. So I didn't know, I, I didn't know that you worked with a publishing company. What was that whole process like? It's been an interesting one. So I worked with New Degree Press, um, signed a deal with them. Um, they're a hybrid publishing company, so you retain all the rights of uh, everything. So even though they help get you published and get you produced, um, yeah. they don't own anything, which was a major thing for me, but I had to pay a premium just to get that. Right. And so now that I know the process and learned it, I'll probably write the rest of them on my own or partner with um, a black owned business just to show some love. Oh no, for sure, that's for sure. And it's, it's, it's important that like we're doing right now, we build together, right? And I know me and you yeah. have talked about a few things we're gonna try to do for our community and people as a whole. And, I, and for me, it's just, uh, it's, it's inspiring, right? It's motivating to see somebody that I know grow up with in, uh, in almost similar lane as, as me, but excelling, you know what I mean? And that's what it's about, you know what I mean? If we can help with one other out one way or another, that's what's truly important. But, uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I do want to know uh, when is the book going to be available? How can someone purchase it? And then also uh, another part two to that question in going through this journey, what have been some of the biggest obstacles you've seen with people in their own mindset and their own personal finances? Definitely. So the very first thing, bro, money is such a tight subject. Most people don't like to be truthful. Yeah. So the moment that you can be real with yourself, bro, and rip the Band-Aid off, if your net worth is negative 50000 it's negative 50000 right? right? It's not a secret. You need to address that. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm sitting down with people, mentally, sometimes they don't want to be tr truly transparent. So I have to dig deeper to get to the real, like, side of their numbers. So I put the numbers on the paper and kind of let that be a story for them to see, like, okay, this is where you are, like. I know you don't want to be here forever, but we got to start doing some things differently for you right. to get to where you truly want to be. Um, so that's one big thing. And then also too, just people not having an understanding about the power of money. Like we sometimes grow up like, uh, you know, rich people are evil, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, but you got to understand like money has no personality, bro. It's not good. It's not bad. It's the person that's holding the money. If you, a solid person and you get a lot of money, you're going to do solid things. You're going to yep. bless people. You're going to help people out. Similar to what you, bro, what you're doing with your business. It's an amazing Appreciate thing. That. Appreciate and that. You got some money and you're doing well with the money. Um, so I want people to understand it's okay to have money. It's okay to be rich. It's okay to have, you know, wealth and pass it on to your children. 
Um, and so just going through that and repairing people's mind, like, hey, this is a blessing for everything. That's, what's, that's real fatherhood right here. <laughs> no, man. Son. That's <laughs> real fatherhood right here. What's up, little man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, definitely. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Okay, I'll come in there, okay? So, yeah, man, it's, um, as far as the mindset goes, it's just really important, bro, just to renew people's mind, to give them hope and optimism that they can overcome their situation, and it's okay to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. well, in, terms, in terms of building your own wealth, uh, I know the first venture was writing a book and then starting a company. Well, are there any other things you want to uh, set your sights into from an entrepreneurial standpoint? Yeah, man. So I always have my eyes open for uh, different opportunities. Um, so recently, the vending machine thing just fell into. Right. So bought six of them to start that business. Um, looking forward to see what that do. I know in a great situation, you can probably do $800 to $1,500 a month if you get right. into the right situation with a um, vending machine. So and that's more than you can do for most real rental properties, honestly. Yeah. So a lot less uh, overhead. Yeah, I know, man. I was doing the numbers last night. Um, stayed up to about four in the morning going through that. But yeah. always looking for opportunities, man, to partner with people and do well. I know my wife is um getting her license to be a real estate agent. So we might dibble and dabble in that a little bit moving forward. Um, but yeah, I really believe you can build wealth in three ways, man. Um, I do stock investing. Uh, real estate, of course, and then ownership through a business. So yep. I really just want to tap into all those three lanes and uh, be as productive as possible. 100%. Same, same. And that's uh, kind of how we've been structuring our videos with the YouTube channel. Um, we talk to entrepreneurs like yourself. Um, I got my friends, Richard and Rome, you know, they are more in the stock investing. We'll talk, break that down with them. And then we got friends in real estate as well, who, you know, can break down the whole process of that. Because those, and I, I have the same belief, those are the only three ways that you can truly um, build wealth in America at, at, at this time in, in the history of the country. But man, uh, you know, I see you got a lot going on, bro. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Let everybody know how they can purchase your book, when it's going to be released, uh, how they can get in contact with you for some financial coaching. Yeah, no problem. So um, the book can be purchased right now via email because it's still available for pre-sale right now. So the book yeah. doesn't officially come out to July. But if you shoot me an email at, um, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you shoot me an email at mentalwealth at um, I can slide you a direct link so you can still um, get the book for pre-order. A signed copy is $28 and the ebook is 15 Okay. Um, and then I'm going to open up a, um, <clears throat> a link on my personal website as well. Okay. And it's going to be jeremiahreed.com, and you you can get the book from there as well. For sure. And then, we'll, go ahead. Oh, no, no problem, brother. And for the financial coaching, um, you can shoot me an email at jeremiah at mentalwealthacademy.net, and we can get you linked in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, nah. So we'll make sure we have all the information and links available in the description of this video. Man, I appreciate your time, Jeremiah. I'm so proud of you, bro. So proud of you. Everything Thank you're doing you. is inspiring and the purpose behind it, helping other people, that's what's important, man. You really uh, helping uplift our community, bro. Nah, you too, man. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. I'm proud of you as well, as I always say. I'm glad we can finally collaborate and the future is bright for us. Oh, for sure. We gonna, uh, trust me, you're going to get tired of seeing me, man. You're going to get tired of seeing me. <laughs> Well, all right, man. You take care, man. Take care of your little ones, man. You have a good day, bro. All right. You too, bro. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye.